This is a must read. Hey everyone, I've recently read the book called Storytelling with Data. This is a great book for anyone working with data visualizations, not just only for data analysts, but for anyone who have to work with presentation or some sort of reporting. It is a fantastic guide that covers the principle of data visualization from the design to the psychology part of it. And there are good examples to help you understand them. It also lists out recommended readings, a great starting point to have a consolidated source of readings to look at. Personally, I felt that the direction of this book was more towards the presentation of data, which as the book suggests, it is supposed to be the storytelling of the data. Nothing wrong with that, but I felt that if we are working on something that is more of a self-analytics dashboard, some of the things might not be entirely applicable. But there are still great takeaways on how to be critical on data visualizations and how to make them meaningful and insightful. This leads us to the first takeaway that the author wants us to understand, which is context. We have to think about the who, what, and how. Who are the users? Is this for a broader audience? Is this for management? Is this for a business user? And with the who, we can start to understand the what. What do the user want? So the management might want something that is on a higher level, whereas a business user might want to go down to specific details. And now with the what, we can look at the how. How can we find the data to answer the question? And how can we present this data? And to dive deeper into the how, we look at how we can create effective visuals. This book covers the different type of visuals and when we can use them. So for example, when looking at two relationships at the same time, we might want to use a scatter plot. When looking at some sort of matrix over time, we will want to use a line chart. The book also discusses what are bad visuals to use. So there are things like the pie chart, 3D charts, and if you have read anything on data visualization, you'll know that these are the things that are hated the most. They misrepresent the data and you can't tell the proportion well. So here we have a pie chart. On the first glance, we can't really tell the distribution in the size of the different product. But now let's add some number. And with this, we can tell that the size of each of this pie are actually different. This is why pie chart is not a very effective visual to show the distribution. Now, let's try another chart. Let's change this to a bar chart. Now, we can clearly see the difference in the size of each of these products. And now let's take a look at what happened when we change to the worst chart possible, which is the 3D chart. Look at this horror that has happened. The size of this chart is very, very distorted. We can see that the orange and the grey pie is significantly larger than the blue pie. But we know that the difference in the size of this pie is actually quite minor. And the next takeaway comes from chapter 3, Clutter. This chapter covers the principles of design, mainly around the Gelstead principles of visual perception. And these are proximity, similarity, enclosure, closure, continuity, and connection. So what does proximity mean is that when we put objects in proximity, we tend to see them as a group together. And for similarity, we will tend to identify things that are similar as a group. So in this case, we identify red as one group and blue as one group. And for enclosure, it refers to a boundary at what is drawn in the boundary. And next, we have closure. It's somewhat similar to enclosure, but the idea of closure is how we perceive this visual is that even though these individual dots are 
are separate object, but when we place it in this manner, we identify it as a square. We naturally draw a connection between these spaces and we identify that a boundary is created by these individual objects. And in continuity, we will look for what looks like the smoothest path. So in this case, I think most of us, the first thing we will see is a vertical line down and a curve. Although you can see that there is two different colors here, but our first focus is finding the smoothest path, which is the vertical line down and the curve going upwards. And this can also be an example of how certain principle might be stronger than the other. Like in this case, continuity is stronger over similarity. And lastly, we have connection. When we connect the different object, our eyes will perceive that this object are actually linked together. We will follow along these lines. The book has also a lot of great examples to demonstrate how these principles can be applied on data visualization. And in chapter 4, focus your attention. This chapter helps us understand how our brain perceives a visual, how things like colors and size grabs our attention, and these are called pre-attentive attributes. So they are a way of how our subconscious mind process information. I found this to be a really interesting topic to read about. And in chapter 5, the author suggests that we should think like a designer. And to do that, we need to understand that form follows function. So I think this concept comes from product design. So an example of product design is, let's say, a cup. And we want a function to be able to hold a hot drink. So what do we do? We change the form of this cup by adding handles on the cup so that we can hold a hot cup of beverage. And this is how we can look at what it means to have form following a function. There are four of these design concepts. So the first we have is affordances. What this means is about how an object or interface allow the users to interact, how it affords the users to have certain action. For example, we have a drop-down bar over here and instinctively you will know that you can click on this and make a selection. So this is how this drop-down bar afford the users to interact. Another way we can look at this is that it gives user direction. It tells the users what to do, how to interact. So we go back to what we have learned previously in the grabbing the audience attention. We learn about pre-attentive attributes. This is direct the users focus to interact with the visual. So like in this case, we use color as a pre-attentive attribute. Our attention will naturally be drawn to the red dot. And next, we have accessibility. So we can think about whether our visual is accessible to users. We want to make this usable for a wide range of users. So how can we do that? There's a few things we can think about. The colors, whether they are colorblind friendly. So usually when we do the colorblind test, we have this green and red dots to do the test. So these are actually colors that are not colorblind friendly. So instead of using this color we can use colors like blue and red but personally i do not think this is a very important factor to look at but it is something that you might want to consider but the next thing which i think is very important it is to simplify things so that users can directly understand what is going on to make it accessible to all levels of user so for example here we have a chart the axis says t ball and t price if we are not someone in the business or very used to the acronyms used in the team, you might not understand what it really means. So it would be good to avoid this abbreviation and actually type out the full name. Next, we have aesthetics. Aesthetics is very straightforward. We just want things to be pleasant looking. So we do not want our chart to look something like this. It's horrifying. Look at this. It's so hard to look at. And with all these funky fonts, I don't think anyone wants to look at this. We do not need to maybe create the best design. I think the most important thing is to make this at least something that you will want to visually look at. So we can just tone down the colors, make the font look clean and simple. This makes things so much more pleasant to look at. 
And in terms of aesthetic, there are a few pointers to think about, which are colors, choosing the appropriate colors, not having too much colors, or look at the alignment to keep things nice and neat, and also white spaces to make it easier for users to look at. Sometimes people are very afraid of white spaces. They like to cramp everything together. But I feel that white spaces are important to make things more readable. And lastly, we have acceptance. So even if we create all this nice design, the user must want to accept the design. If they refuse to use it, there's really no point in it. So one example could be, say, a pie chart. If maybe the user is so used to using a pie chart, that is how they have represented their data all the time and they are just not willing to change. So in that case, it's really hard for them to accept something else. So then this requires a different skill set of how to manage such stakeholder to maybe educate them or convince them to accept the design. And the last takeaway of this book is storytelling, which is the title of the book. It looks at how we can tell a story with data to think about how we can bring our audience through it. We have to go back to the fundamental of what a structure of a story is. And that is, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. The book talks about some strategy that we can implement. We can bring the audience through a logical flow, or maybe start with the end to grab the audience's attention. Let's go through a simple example of how we can bring in a storytelling flow into a dashboard. So over here, we have some numbers. So here we can see the result of December sales compared against the previous month, which is November. And what we are telling our audience is that there is a increase in sales. So this is the first information we tell our audience, increase in sales. And the next thing we can share with our audience is a trend line of the sales over time, broken down by product. So this gives us specific details into the sales and we can look into it and we can realize that in December, there is a spike in the sales for product B. And why is that the case? is because there is an advertising campaign for product B in December. So this brings a flow in the dashboard by allowing the users to follow along the details. These are also skills that we can apply in presentation or while writing a report. If there are any books that you would like to recommend, please do share them in the comments below. I would love to take a look at them.